part two of why I'm terrified of babysitting again. Like I said, when the mom came home after I left, she told me that the kids were gone. So I described to her the man that I saw in the house that I thought was the dad, and she told me that was the ex-husband who had a spare key to their house. But she did not believe me right away. At first, she was asking me a lot of questions, acting as if I was the one who kidnapped them. Almost as if she was accusing me of kidnapping. And you know what? Those feelings were right. Obviously, the police had to get involved, and when I spoke to them, they told me that the mom wanted to know if I knew where the kids were. And I had already told her about the man that I saw. But they said that they would also look into the ex-husband as well. So she kind of believed me, but didn't 100%. I was literally being accused of kidnapping three kids but they were looking more into me because her ex-husband lived in colorado we lived in kansas so i was a prime suspect up until they interviewed the dad and he gave himself up like for part three of why i'll never babysit again so like i said they were finally able to interview the dad but it took a while because he lived in a different state but when they interviewed him he mentioned this girlfriend that he had it was his current girlfriend and so they asked him where she lived and all that good stuff well the police decided that they were going to question the girlfriend as well so they went over to the girlfriend's house they knocked on the door and as soon as they knock on the door the police hear a child crying the dad didn't mention anything about his girlfriend having kids and the next thing you know a toddler runs up to the door a toddler that looks exactly like one of the kids that i was babysitting and so the police arrested the girlfriend and the police arrested the dad for kidnapping three children mom finally got her kids back and everything was good the kids were not harmed in any way this all happened in the span of like a week or two the mom actually ended up coming to me and personally apologizing about how she acted but i told her it was no biggie because anybody would act like that in a situation where their kids were gone and i continue to babysit her kids here's another babysitting horror story and how my babysitter almost killed me and my baby sister so it first started when my parents hired a babysitter for us at first she was really sweet and then she started being really mean out of nowhere she started hitting us when we would cry and she would blow cigarette smoke in our face one time when she was driving us home from the grocery store my baby sister was crying really hard the whole entire car ride when we got home she got me out of the car and brought in the groceries but she left my two-year-old sister in the car it was 103 degrees and she left her in there. That's honestly when I first started becoming scared of her. But why I became terrified of her is because one time my parents went on vacation for like a week. And one night my babysitter ordered pizza. My parents sent the babysitter the money for it. It was for all of us, but she wanted to get anchovies on the pizza. I told her I didn't really want that, but she ordered it anyway. When the pizza came, I didn't really want to eat it. And instead of her being like, well, I'll just make you something else. She locked me into a room for three days. She would only let me out to use the bathroom, but I wasn't allowed to eat anything. After that, she made starving us a regular thing. Then my parents came back and took us to the hospital for a checkup, like for part two. This is part two of my babysitting horror story. So like I said, my parents came back from vacation and took us to the hospital for a checkup. They took us to the hospital because they noticed we were getting really skinny. When we got to the hospital, the doctor said my two-year-old baby sister only weighed 19 to 20 pounds. And I was 13 at the time, I only weighed 90 pounds. The look on my mom and dad's face was enough. So when we got back into the car, I finally told them about what the babysitter had been doing. Now hold on tight, because the way my mama reacted to this, you would have thought somebody possessed her. Immediately, my mom started going off on my dad, like yelling and screaming at him. And he just had his hands in his face. I was so confused as to what was going on. See, I didn't know my dad when I was younger. He passed away before I was born. And so I found out that my current dad at the time wasn't my real dad. And I didn't know the truth until this whole babysitting situation. She babysat me for like a month and then my parents fired her. I'm 23 now. I honestly could have forgotten all about her. Well, just last year, my mom told me that that babysitter was my dad's ex-wife. Well, anyways, this is what my mom did to my stepdad's ex-wife after we went to the hospital. This is part three of my babysitting horror story. So like I said, I finally told my parents about what the babysitter had been doing to me and my baby sister. I was so confused as to why my mom started going off on my dad right away after I told her. But 10 years later, I'm finally finding out that my babysitter was my stepdad's ex-wife. My mom told me that she had been really iffy about letting my stepdad's ex-wife babysit me and my little sister but she only agreed with it to save money so my mom told my dad to get out of the driver's seat she got into the driver's seat and she started driving i wasn't exactly sure where we were going and my dad didn't know either but we ended up at the babysitter's house luckily for her she wasn't home because my mom would have dropped her shit she might have even got a murder charge that day but my mom told me to get a rock and to just start chucking them at her windows so that's what i did there me and my mom were chucking rocks at my babysitter's window and my dad was watching us holding my baby sister my mom didn't take her to court or anything i'm not exactly sure why probably something to do with my dad but my mom made my dad cut contact with her completely and they fired her 
this is why bring your pet to school day is banned from my school i just want everyone to know that this was bound to happen the kids at my school are super irresponsible i don't know why the teachers thought this was a good idea i was one of those really irresponsible kids and i didn't pay attention to which pets were allowed to be brought to the school they weren't allowed to stink they had to be a certain size and you weren't supposed to bring them on the bus if you were bringing a pet you had to be a car rider well i might have broken some of these rules so i had a pet milk snake it was about three feet in size and i brought it to school without telling my parents because you had to get a parent signature form and no i was not a car rider i brought it on the bus i was carrying it in my backpack and my backpack was all the way zipped up so there was no way for it to get out so I got on the bus and then like five minutes later, my bus buddy got on the bus. Asked him, did you bring your pet to school? He goes, no, I'm on the bus, aren't I? I was like, okay, I'm on the bus and I brought mine. He tells me we weren't allowed and then he has to see it. When I open my bag to show him, it wasn't there. Then I hear my bus driver scream and she swerves the bus. Like for This is part two of why bring your pet to school day is banned from my school. So like I said, I'm on the bus and I open my bag to show my friend my pet snake. But when I open my bag, it wasn't there. And then I hear the bus driver scream and she swerves the bus. He yells that there's a snake on the bus, which causes panic. Kids start crying. Some try to jump out the bus window. Like it was literal chaos. The bus driver almost crashed the whole bus. But she was able to steady it out. But nobody knew where this snake was. I honestly just tried to act like i didn't know what was going on like what snake never heard of her is that some type of drink anyways so luckily i looked across the seat from me the seat in front of them under it was the snake my friend was sitting on the outside of the bus seat so i told him to grab it try to get him to grab it before anybody sees it but he didn't so i just launched over there and i grabbed it put it in my bag and continued to act like nothing happened okay so i'm running out of time so i'm gonna zoom past a little bit but i'll come back on the next part so my school lets us carry our backpacks anywhere we want so i had the snake in my backpack all day but two periods before chemistry i decided to let it loose so i could skip the class so this is part three of why bring your pet to school day is banned from my school okay so i'm backtracking a little bit so after the snake was let loose on the bus since we got to the school somebody had to come onto the bus and figure out the situation what was going on they asked if anybody brought their pet on the bus obviously i did not give myself up and they ended up just concluding that a random snake got on the bus okay so back to where i was at i had a chemistry test that day as well like i said i was very irresponsible so i did not study for my test or did i care for this snake so i knew the chaos that it would bring to let it loose so that's what i did so it could cause chaos so then i didn't have to take my chemistry test and half an hour after i let it loose on the announcements they tell everybody to stay in their rooms there is a snake on the loose apparently it was found in a bathroom in a toilet somebody sat down on that toilet and had the worst time discovering that snake low-key feel bad for them once they found it they put it on the announcements that they found the snake and whoever lost it can come get it and they described it so i went to go get it okay so this is part four of why bring your pet to school day is banned from my school like i said oh, jesus christ i almost died so like i said i went down to the office to claim my snake i obviously got into a lot of trouble for that they called my parents my parents came down to the school oh so i got suspended my parents grounded me for months and months and months i was not allowed to leave my house i couldn't go out to see my friends but i was only suspended for like a week and when i went back to school everybody knew that it was me who brought that snake to school and so the person who sat down on the toilet seat and found the snake knew that it was me too and that person didn't say anything to me but i did get word that that person was very pissed because that snake went straight up there you know so after that they just didn't allow kids to bring their pets to school anymore which is reasonable i kind of ruined it for everybody else but i don't really care because it's not that serious but people can't just hate on me because there was this other kid who brought a spider and it got loose in class but they were able to find it really quickly so it didn't escape the classroom or anything but i did what i had to do so story time of how i found out that my mom was actually my older sister my older sister never really liked me as a child we were never close i never knew why but i was guessing it was because of the 10 year age gap but i'm pretty sure she hated me because she couldn't even look me in the eye i cannot make this up she would not look me in the eye but she never really talked to my parents either. She kind of just kept to herself all the time. Sometimes I have vivid memories of when we were younger and she would always be arguing with my parents about something and I always thought it had something to do with me. Well, I was right. It had everything to do with me because eventually my sister turned 18 and she moved out. For two years, I didn't talk to her at all. I honestly don't even think I had her number saved. And I'm pretty sure that she didn't have mine. Well, two years later, and I was 10 at the time, she reached out to me via social media. I'm not sure how she found my Instagram name, but it was just my name, so she probably just typed that in and found me. She DM'd me and told me that she wanted to talk about something very important and that she would like to talk over the phone. So we exchanged numbers and we called that same night. And she told me that when she was younger, my dad had taken advantage of her and gotten her pregnant and had me. 
This is part two of how I found out that my mom was actually my older sister. So like I said, my older sister had reached out to me via social media and told me that she was actually my mother. And so after we got off the phone that same night, I lost it at dinner and I went off on my parents and I screamed at them. And I told them that I would go to the police and tell them everything and I would tell them the truth unless they just let me live with my older sister. And they tried to explain themselves and their reasoning was that they wanted to keep the family together because of their traditional values. And it would have just made their lives a lot harder going through all the court proceedings so they just kept the family together. And so they clearly didn't want me to go into the police so they said that I could go live with my older sister. So she came to get me but she lived in a different state so it kind of took a while. I still had to stay in the house for like a week or so before she came. But I packed all my stuff and I was ready to go and when we went back to where she lived... We immediately called the police and told them everything. Fast forward a little bit, they did some DNA testing. My sister's DNA matched as my biological mother's and then my dad was my biological father and they saw how the ages just didn't match properly so they took my father to jail. What's one really bad thing you did as a child that you kept secret for your entire life and didn't tell nobody? I'll go first. I got a lot of stories like this but this is just one of them. So my mama used to put me in daycare and in my daycare we used to do field trips and we went to the YMCA. So while we were in the pool, this one white kid comes up to me. He asked me, like, why are you black? And I was kind of embarrassed, but I wasn't mad at the kid. I was more embarrassed than I was mad. And I told him that my parents painted me every single day. And I was thinking back at the time when I scraped my knee and the skin came off and there was like no blood. It was just bone. But I didn't know that it was bone. I thought that I was just white underneath. So I was like, it's true. Like I can peel my skin off and prove it. When I did that, I peeled skin off my finger and it was a lot of skin and I started bleeding really bad. So the water started getting red and the daycare people tried to get everybody out the water like there was something going on. And then once everybody was out of the water, one of the daycare people go, I'm so, 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 so sorry, everybody. I lost my tampon. I need to find it. Okay, so what happened was pretty self-explanatory, but I can make a part two if you guys want.
this is part two of the time my mom faked her death so she didn't have to take care of me and my siblings like i said my aunt told me that my mom had died and they cremated her and they let her keep the ashes and that she was going to start taking care of us me not knowing how long the cremating process actually took at the time since i was so young i believed her until one day i saw my aunt getting picked up by the same black car that my mom used to get picked up by before she died that's when i decided to check these supposed ashes and it was actually flour so one day when my aunt got picked up by this black car i decided to follow her i did have a car i was five years old so i had to follow them by walking and hiding behind bushes i was able to follow them up the street and once they turned the corner and there i saw my mom standing on the side of the street that's when i see the car stop and i see my aunt get out and approach my mother she tells my mom to give her her money for covering for her and taking care of me and my little brother my mom says she faked her death because my dad wasn't in our lives and she didn't want to take care of us anymore i'm older now and i cut her off completely and i have full custody of my little brother this is gonna be a story time about how my whole school went on a manhunt for one student why was they looking for his ass i'm gonna get into it let me clarify right now that i am a victim i do not want nobody in the comments saying why didn't you do this why did you do this it could have been me it could have been any of us that's why i minded my business throughout this whole thing so i got to school a little late that day but when i got to my class i could tell there was a little tension in the air i didn't know what it was whether it was a teacher having a problem with a student or a student having a problem with another student i just knew that the energy was off so i'm sitting down in class minding my business per usual the next thing i see is my teacher try to grab this one boy's phone he immediately snatches it off his desk before she can grab it. That's when they get into this little tug of war type of thing. But the next thing you know, everybody sees this boy molly the teacher in the stomach. She falls and he runs out the classroom. Some kids started laughing and thought it was funny until the teacher wasn't waking up. This is when things get bad, like for part two. This is going to be part two of the time my whole school went on a manhunt for one student. So like I said, this kid punched his teacher and ran out of the classroom and the teacher wasn't waking up anymore. So as you can imagine, a room full of drained high school students who just woke up a few hours ago, we were all kind of just like looking around at each other. No one thought to, I don't know, tell somebody that this shit happened. Like, were we silent? Or were we silent? I blame the school system for making school so early because I feel like once you get to school, your cognitive functions get out the window. So I really try hard not to feel guilty about this and I try not to blame my other classmates for not doing anything as well. And then eventually like five minutes pass and then we're like, okay, maybe we should check if she's awake at least. That's when one of the students get up and start to check. Well, they check and they say that she's not breathing. It obviously set something off in our brains like this is an emergency, something needs to happen now. That's when a bunch of us ran to the office and they called the ambulance like for part three. 